weirdly enough, right? Because mm. I plan on this coming out on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, wow. And I wanted to say... I'm intrigued. Yeah. Um, I think it's more just considering that St. Patrick's Day is just looked at as leprechaun, you know, yeah. from Ireland, all that and kind Patrick of stuff. And Patrick the Roman. Kiss me, I'm Irish. Mm. Um, I want to start off the St. Patrick's story yeah. with a little bit of similarity between Malta and Ireland. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know how St. Patrick has the whole spiel with the snakes and stuff? Mm. We also have a holiday com is celebrated completely differently called St. Paul's Shipwreck. Mm. And the way it goes about is that St. Paul, who wasn't a saint at the time, was a shipwreck outside of Malta. They came to shore and he was telling a story around the fire and spreading the word of like Jesus and all that. Kind of is this the actual St. Paul? The, the yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Jesus guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The apostle, wow. I believe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, he came to Malta and similar to the Irish, sitting around the fire, spreading the word of God at the time. And out from the fire, this is the story, out from the fire came a snake and bit him. Mm. And he shook the snake off mm. and everyone around the fire was waiting for him to collapse. But he didn't. Mm. And from that day forward, there was never any venomous snakes on the island. Mm. That's our, like, thing. Okay. What about your guys? Well, sure. it there was never snakes in Ireland. Real snakes. Oh, shit. No. That's how we fucking started off. There was no snakes. <laughs> no. I thought there was a fucking snake thing. Am I stupid? No, 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 no. The no. story is just a, a, an analogy, a kind of metaphor for the pagans. Okay, carry on. But no, excited. but your story is cool though. I look I stupid, sorry. No, you don't look stupid. You don't, because <laughs> no, that, that's, that's what everybody, it is the story okay, that he so, drove the snakes out of Ireland. Okay, okay yeah, yeah, yeah. But so I'm just a filthy foreigner. That's like no, I, I didn't know you're not a filthy oh, foreigner. Far from spot it. No, 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 no. Um, no, he, there was never any snakes in Ireland. Um, but dragons did exist. Yes, yes. He drove the dragons out of Ireland. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was, he... The story is really about basically converting the, the, the island to Christianity. So converting the, the serpent, you know, the way the serpent is, you know, a kind of a symbol for... Adam and Eve and the devil? Yeah, the well, the, and then there's the whole aspect of the serpent in the occult and, you know, alchemy and stuff like that, with that it's kind of like the wise one, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the the serpent would, would not be looked at, at as, as evil in, in, the, in paganism. Okay. It would be looked at as the the, the symbol of, of of wisdom, you know. Um, so, the Patrick stuff is controversial. It really is. It really is, especially after the, the, all the research I've done. Okay, this is take two. So give us a new. Yeah, one. like the thing is, um, and I think there's a lot of more people waking up to this. That that you know, my dad would always say this, and I used to wreck my head before, but like it was so true. Like he said, Patrick the Roman. He was a Roman, like, mm. you know, so he apparently he was from Wales, but then there are some people that say he was from Scotland, but it was, let, let's just say Wales because just keep it simple. But he was an aristocratic Welsh Roman. So that would have been the, the edge of the Roman, the Roman empire at the time. And the Romans never conquered Ireland. That's one thing you have to remember, but they did with the church, but they didn't with the, the army. Um, but from my research, Palladius was the one that really set off the... Palladius was the one that came before Patrick. Palladius. Um, but for some reason, his story is kind of brushed over. Mm. But from my research is that he did the ground... He, he laid the groundwork for Christianity. Now, I'm doing a bit of work with another guy and we're, we're thinking about doing, you know, kind of like a, a documentary on ancient Ireland uncovered and stuff like that. Um, and he's really into the idea that Patrick actually came with a with an army like and started wiping out people and stuff like that like um now people were saying to, this to me around six months ago and I was kind of in the TikTok and I was like vehemently against it and I was like how dare you talk about our saint our patron saint yeah St. Patrick, he never wiped out anybody and it, it was it was the only green it was the only sorry island or um, country in the world that Christianity came in without bloodshed. You know, this mm. is what we're told, right? Um, you know, and then there was a whole thing about green martyrdom. The Christian monks, there was no bloodshed. There was no war. So they had a green martyrdom instead of red martyrdom. Basically, they used to go out to have an aesthetic lifestyle, which was another way of, you know, in martyrdom, you're dying for your faith, right? Yes. You know what I mean? So they would have like 
been slowly suiciding themselves from the way they were living for the faith. Mm. You know, going out into Skellig Michael and going out into the wilderness and living with the... Oh yeah, like the stories that you hear from those... Bankers, like. And then the Vikings came along and started attacking those places. It was just crazy. Um, but anyway, sorry, I'm going off on tangents, but the whole thing about St. Patrick is, is it's, it's fascinating because maybe he didn't even exist. That's, that's what I'm reading. If he did exist, um, it was the beginning of the, the Christianization of Ireland. But the problem was and that our, the Irish church was a lot different to what the Roman church was. And so the mission of St. Patrick or whoever it was, Palladius or whatever, was to basically get the Irish church under control. Mm. But they couldn't. Some people believe that there was a type of church here already that was a sun-worshipping church, um, a kind of church of Iessa. And what a pretty name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's crazy. Come. This is this is crazy stuff now. Like we're yeah, yeah. we're going down territories now where definitely judgment and it's definitely. Okay. It's yeah. okay. I'm a filthy foreigner after all. <laughs> no, okay. stop saying that. Um, You're far okay. from filthy. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of filthy. <laughs> is God's sake. Thank you. I sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, carry on. That's so interesting, though. Yeah. So it's a sun worshiping church. It, it was. Well, this. No, I'm just saying. This is theories, theories. and this is just from research from books okay. I'm reading. So would this be mythology? Technically. Mytho mythology territory that we're touching on or his no it, according to some people it would be historical wow yeah okay. for sure so like yeah like the and so it's like a polarizing topic yeah very That's polarizing okay. and, a, and and what what is being suggested is that the roman church mm. and I remember you have the roman pope you know yes. the roman popes are coming into power and constant uh, constantine would have um you know converted from paganism to christianity because it was like this is the new it's almost like the new thing it's almost like a new political ideology a new kind of like you know yeah, yeah. format of controlling people or whatever right now you know i'm just trying to equate it to modern terms right i'm not saying it's the same thing so constantine converted to christianity and then um you know he would have used that i'm sure it was he was just basically it was like changing labels it's like changing from Burger King to McDonald's like it was still selling burgers but it was just oh, different yeah, labels yeah. right so it was like using the pagan gods and kind of incorporating them into the new Christian church and the Roman church now think about it right mm. he's an emperor and the church and remember what I said about Brian Brew what he was trying to do earlier uh, what I was saying earlier on it was trying there was this whole thing about having church and state making is is like almost like um the kingship, the emperor is like a sacred being, right? Yeah, yeah. Even though it's human. Look at the Pope today. It's like a sacred person that controls mm -hmm. the institution. This was the whole thinking behind it, is to make it sacred so that they could be worshipped. So it's, not, it's much like pharaohs of the past, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea of sending these Romans over to Ireland was to stop this church in Ireland, because the Romans never defeated us. They never went over to Ireland. They never defeated us. Because what I believe is that we actually had a system in place. We actually had defense. We had a defense. And also we had a very powerful church and very powerful people. And they did not want to mess with us. Why else would they not go there? Like, you know, so they sent what I, what I'm starting to think now, maybe I'm going in, in tangents here. Um, what I'm starting to believe is that the whole idea behind the Christianization of the country was to weaken it. And it was like infiltration through spirituality. Mm. So the spirituality that existed there was powerful and we had our druids and we had our kings and we had our clans and we had our, you know, just unbelievable power, right? This is why I'm so interested in, in this and why it's not being explored, you see. It's not being explored for a reason. And so Patrick and Palladius were sent here to kind of start the infiltration process. And maybe there was bloodshed, maybe they brought armies, maybe they, they just killed them off one by one. But apparently the Druids were all just wiped out like, and they were the snakes. What? According to the Romans. Wow. Yeah, they were the Magi, the Irish Magi. They were the magicians of Ireland. So the Druids would have been huge. They were the priests. Because you said wisdom. 
Mm. Yeah, they they were the priests of of of, of Ireland yes. in in the old in the old ways. So you would have had your your king, your queen. You would have had your fillet, which is the poet and the Shanna queen, right? So you have the, and they were all of equal importance yes. within the with the clan. And then you had your druids, and a lot of them would have been roaming around with their with their um, basically with their their powers and also with their they they were in charge of. Um, language and law and stuff like that yeah 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 so they were kind of real powerful and there's some people think that they used to travel around the world mm. and actually the, the christian monks would have carried on a tradition of of, of uh being centers of learning and, and traveling around yeah i know we have jehovah's witness yeah exactly Fox and carry on. so that 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 part that patrick story so that would have been the beginning the beginning of christianity and look we have to acknowledge the fact that Christ, the christian story is very powerful and there's something beautiful about it too mm-hmm. there's no doubt about it um the, i do there is something powerful about in jesus christ you know like a lot of people would attest to having supernatural occurrences and just saying that that word those words can just ward off these things. And there's some people that think there's something about those words that is actually magical. Like there's what, some, are, what words are you talking about? Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know. Like talk through Jesus, yeah. There's yeah, there's some sort of me. there's some sort of power in the words. Mm. Um so there was that infiltration process that was happening. Um and I, it kind of took centuries. Yeah. It took centuries. I know you mentioned that you said Saint Pat or Patrick could have not even existed maybe not there's some theories so yeah. would it be the what was his name again palladius palladius, palladius and mm. someone else or could palladius potentially be patrick yes so i've i've and, and people yeah you know they can comment all they want on this i've actually talked sat, sat down with a priest about this mm-hmm. clarendon street and we've had big discussions i also had a a, a a meeting with an author of of a book called the two patricks okay and this author said to me Maybe he didn't even exist. Wow. Okay. Even though he wrote a book about the two Patricks. And he was telling me all about Palladius, who came first and did all the work in terms of like the kind of laying the groundwork, the foundation. So you have to remember as well, the kings and the power structures of the time were always looking for different ways of, you know, like They're Constantine did, right? right? Yeah, so yeah. there was this element to it as well, mm. where it was like, you know, people would come in and 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 they'd have this way about them. And and back then it was a different world, no electricity, you know, people coming in and they had their, they were just, you know, the, I imagine the Druids going around, they're just this beaming energy. Like, and maybe these people, these Romans coming in were just amazing strangers, like, but they came in with these stories of Christ and, and it just started infiltrating the consciousness, you know, and it started changing things from the inside out. 100%. 100%. Yeah, like know? we're still going through it now mm. where um, I do think that the the religion or the Bible itself is a gorgeous work yeah. of 100%. scripture and it helps mm. so many people. But the culture in itself mm. is the you are lesser than mm. Give us the money. Mm, mm. There's so <laughs> many, so many versions of Christianity. It just so, tells you everything. You exactly, know? exactly. Mm. Whose God is uh, not even God? Because it's not even a battle of religions. But it's like how. So, for instance, um, like back home, there we've got like patron saints depending on the town and stuff. Mm. Now, in fairness, it's a completely different story with like feasts, but. There would be talks of my Mary, like my Virgin Mary is better than yours. Yeah. And it's like, how many versions of the Virgin yeah. Mary do we have? Yeah. Yeah. And that is under one religion. Mm. It's just the, the tale or the story of chapter one or chapter two in her life versus chapter 10. And it, it ends up becoming a battle, mm. let alone the different uh, variations of Christianity. Mm was witness for instance i've asked basic like, questions to different religious people and and i love these people because they're great people and oh I, they're I, so good i love i you know there's nothing wrong with if, whatever way a person wants to live once they don't impress it on Look, others you, you know, said su- others. supernatural at the start but mm. uh, as you said with the powers of the word jesus and mm. whatever i do think that there is an element of i heard jesus talk to me mm. someone else could say that's my intuition yeah Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yes. Or it could be the higher power. Mm. Who the fuck knows? But at the end of the day, it's like, as long as you end up in the fucking m- taking the right decision and not screwing people over, that's the key thing. Exactly. And that's what a lot of people have 
a problem with the church. Mm. What's interesting though, this this is what I want I want to ask you about St. Patrick's Day, mm. considering that now I have a newfound story that I'm mm. just hearing for the first time. Mm. So essentially, what is St. Patty's Day celebrating? It can I be perfectly honest, it's never been my favorite day. I've always uh, admired St. Patrick in the story, but it's never been my favorite day because it was always just a big piss up like it is a big piss it's up. It's a big piss up. Do you think, like, yeah. besides the excuse of drinking, of going out, mm. some would say also celebrating Irish identity. Do yes. people, do yes. Irish people know yeah. what they're celebrating for? Like, if I were to go on the road, I actually never went to a uh, Paddy's Day parade, weirdly mm. enough. Don't but great. Maybe if you go to New York, they're it, cool. It intimidated, mm. like, a lot of junk people around me yeah. intimidated me during daylight. So that's basically it. But uh, anyways, it's kind of, do they, are they just taught snakes out of Ireland? Are you talking about this story, Dave, for the Irish people? Story, yeah, this story for Irish people. Like, yeah. let's get to New York and whatever out of it. Like, yeah. St. Paddy's Day in Dublin. Mm. What are they celebrating? So, yeah, like, in terms of when you're a child, you learn about the story. The, yeah. the, the actual generic story of Patrick coming. And, and the, the whole story is that he came as a slave in the beginning because there was a lot of slave trading in those days everybody was were slaves at that time i know some people like you know nowadays it's all about one or two races that were slaves but actually we all were slaves at one particular point in history that's a fact yes the irish were slaves the welsh they so we we would take slaves we would be slaves the vikings took slaves and we took their slaves it was just the way the mm -hmm. world worked it was horrible so he became a slave to the Celts and um, he he was a kind of a sheep herder. That was okay. his job, right? So it wasn't necessarily like slavery being hugely terrible because you could get nice little jobs out of it, which he was a sheep herder. And that sounds a bit weird that slavery wasn't terrible, but you know what I'm saying? Like it was, it yeah. was like, what, what I'm saying, when we think of slavery, it's almost straight away, the person is just underground dying. Yes. But Patrick was out in the fields with the sheep, like and minding the sheep. And he would have developed a kind of a very much a, a consciousness for for nature and God, I think. So he escaped and returned back to his aristocratic family in in Wales, which was a Roman family, technically speaking. But, but he grew disillusioned with that lifestyle after being in Ireland, even though he was a slave. Mm. You know, so that's the, my point is that even though he was a slave, it wasn't a terrible lifestyle. He was out in nature. He was experiencing a lot of the world. Um. And he decided to return. He had a kind of a Christian, I don't know what, did he have a, some sort of conversion or something like that then? And he would have returned, he had a vision of returning to Ireland and Christianizing Ireland. And yeah. and he came with no people and he just basically started walking the land and started, I don't know how he did it. He must have walked up, rocked on up to, to one of the clans and said, lads, I'm here to talk to you about Christ, uh, you know, okay. so that's the story. And where the fuck did the snakes come into this? And then, so then he, he basically, this is, this is the thing where I find this very difficult to understand, right? Okay. Because I went to the Hill of Tara and I told you I had a weird experience there. And maybe we can talk about, I don't know how much longer we have. I'm, I'm oh, fine. I'm fine for time. I'm fine for time. Yeah. I'm fine for time. Don't worry. <laughs> He's fine for time guys. He's yeah. <laughs> So, um, like, so I went to the Hill of Tara and basically he was saying, okay, there across the way, this is the most sacred place in Ireland, the ceremonial ha heart of Ireland. This is where the kings, the high kings, fought in almost, let's just say two or 3,000 years, but could potentially up to 4,000 years mm. of this place being like 142 kings inaugurated. So Patrick went over to another hill and on a pagan festival day, I think it was, where they light a, 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 f a fire for the kingship or for that pagan festival, he went over and he lit a, a fire over on a hill mm -hmm. just across the way, which was like flying in the face of, of this like tradition. And I was thinking to myself, how in God's name did he come out of that alive if he did that himself? By himself, yeah. And not only that, I got a book recently and it's talking about, um, what's it's the island of the setting sun and it's talking about that hill is in line with the Hill of Tara and also Crow Patrick, which is actually some sort of, not a ley line, but it's some sort of astronomical line. And he lit a fire while they were lighting the fire there. Basically, the High King might have been like, what the hell is going on over there? Mm. And in Crow Patrick, where, where that became Patrick's Hill afterwards, that was another very sacred place as well. 
how did he have the knowledge of all that? That's the question, like. Oh, the power of God. Yeah. Come on, Bertie. I, I don't know, like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, the thing is, the more I look into it, the more I think that there was a huge, massive thing going on at that time with a lot of people, and it's all been written out of history. It's been written out. It's also just whoever, like, which humans lingered on, yeah. which families lingered on yeah. that could keep telling all of these And stories. it became his story. Uh, his, his story. Rather than her story with yeah. Grace O'Malley. 